for Boston, it just keeps looking better. It's great to be us, and people can joke about it, but it's true. It's unbelievable. The Red Sox won the World Series. The Patriots won the Super Bowl. We knew both teams had a chance to make a run, and it's only looking better for both teams. And starting with the Bruins, they're now the best, best seed left in the playoffs, so they'll have home ice the rest of the way. So it's going to have to go through Boston, and I'm not a hockey expert, but it's tough to play in Boston, whatever sport, and it showed in Game 7. The place seemed electric last night, and the Bruins came ready to play from the get-go, and just another win for Boston. I want to transition to the Celtics. They're playing their best basketball right now at the right time. They're moving the ball better. It doesn't mean that they're not going ISO one-on-one, -on -one. they're not taking turns, because they still are at times. It's more one-on-one -on -one than I would like. Tatum will go one-on-one, -on -one. Morris will go one-on-one, -on -one. Rozier will go one-on-one, -on -one. Kyrie will go one-on-one, -on -one. but the, mo the ball movement is better, which is so crucial for this team. They're going to get one-on-one -on -one buckets because they're very talented, and they're going to take advantage of those matchups, but the ball needs to move, and it's moved better against the Pacers, and I think Brad is finally having his influence on this team. I think it's taken longer than people would have liked with Brad's influence on this team, but I think Brad got these guys going for the playoffs. So I think he's one guy that deserves a lot of credit for the Celt how the Celtics have played to end the stretch. I think Kyrie Irving and Al Horford is a combination that was not utilized as much as it should have been in the regular season, and I think it's being utilized a lot more in the playoffs. And not only that, but Al Horford's just taken a lot more shots. I think he had at least 18 shots, and he didn't shoot well. But my thing with Al, as my thing always was with Kevin Garnett, is when he takes more shots, they're a better team. And especially with, with Kyrie Irving and Al Horford down the stretch and that pick and roll play or pick and pop going one of the two at the end of games, that's money for them. And the fact that they're focused on that to me is a very good sign. For this team to be successful, it needs to go through Kyrie Irving and Al Horford. Guys like Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, Jason Tatum can be good secondary options down the stretch. But at end of games and when they need a bucket most, it's got to be Kyrie and Al. That's the key to this team, I think, is going through those two guys most of the game and use the others as secondary options for when guys double. Now, when I look at the team and I think, what can I take away from the four-game sweep? Because, again, the Pacers are terrible. I said it before with Marcos. Without Oladipo, that was one of the worst teams I've seen in terms of offense. The inability for them to score. It, the fact that Bogdanovich is their best scorer is sad. So the Pacers had nothing. But I think as a whole, as I said, the team's coming together better. They're moving the ball better. It seems like guys have a little bit more defined roles, although there still is the one-on-one -on -one play. You're just going to have to accept that. At least I am. But I think the biggest thing... And be, again, in addition to the Kyrie and Al being assertive at end of games, when I look at Gordon Hayward, Gordon Hayward is not back to his old self. People say he is. He's not. He's still not consistently explosive enough. However, in that series, really for the first time, especially one of his dunks that they didn't even call, didn't, didn't even include as a bucket because they called a foul, to me, that was his most explosive play of the whole season, which is a really good sign. And he's playing more consistent. They don't need Gordon Hayward to be at the elite level that they thought he would be because they have other players to score. But they need him to be a consistent scorer, along with Tatum and Brown. And he has been. And so if Tatum and Brown are playing well, and Hayward's almost back to his old self, he's not back to his old self, but he almost is, and he's playing more like it, there's no reason why this team can't get to the finals. And if I'm making a prediction, I'm, I think right now my gut's telling me they're getting to the finals. And I don't want to overreact to the series against the Pacers. But from what I've seen, when you include the stretch they've been on in terms of 11 of 13, when it seems like the chemistry is a little bit better, when it seems like Kyrie and Al have that chemistry down the stretch, when you see guys like Hayward in Tatum, in Brown, scoring consistently. And you get rid of a guy like Marcus Smart. And I want to end the podcast by discussing the influence of that. Obviously, Marcus Smart, in and of itself, he, he is a great positive to this team. I'm a big Marcus Smart guy. 
Obviously, his offense is inconsistent at times. He shot a lot better this season. And But what he does on the defensive end, what he does to make winning plays, however, I said from the very beginning when this team was struggling, they had too many talented players. But they had too many guys that were talented but not talented enough to make a difference. And I said it before, it's just econ, diminishing marginal return. And when you have too many pieces, too many things to, to coexist, whether it's in a kitchen, for example, and you have too many people in the kitchen, and therefore even if you have a lot of great chefs, it might decrease productivity and it might not get better because you have too many moving parts. And if you think about in basketball, you only have five players on the court. Even if you have 10 great players, if they don't mesh well together, it doesn't matter. It's the best five pieces you can put together on a court. And so just because Marcus Smart is a great talent, it doesn't mean that if they already have eight or nine guys playing well, that adding him to the mix is going to create a better team. And I said this from the very beginning, and people are now talking about it now, in that when you take out anyone, they're a better team. Because there are, there are fewer guys to play. You can have longer shifts. You can be on the court for a longer time. Guys like Hayward and Brown get bigger opportunity and get more minutes. And when guys have more minutes and they know that they're not going to come out maybe you know, after four or five minutes because Marcus needs to come in and Rozier needs to come in and they have too many guys, you're not going to press as much. When you have less minutes and you have better, a lot more talent, guys can press and they might look for their shot more. They might look sure look for their shot more often than they would or quicker or need to get theirs. But if they know that they're going to be playing more, then there's not going to be this pressure to get theirs because the shots will come if they play more minutes. I mean, that's the key with this team is when you subtract someone, that means guys are playing longer minutes and there's a tighter shift and it's easier for Brad to, to organize and know who's playing well and sit those guys and and when you have too many guys, it's hard on the coach, it's hard on the players, it's hard to get to, into a rhythm. And I think what you're seeing with this team is, team is guys are in rhythm right now, which is great to see. So as I wrap up this podcast, the Bruins won last night. The Celtics are looking great. One of these teams probably should get to the finals, if not both of these teams. I'm all in on the Bruins. I'm all in on the Celtics. It's great to be us. It's great to be from Boston. And everyone else who's not from this city must hate us 